morning and a very warm welcome to this service of Holy Communion for the 8th Sunday after Trinity. Reverend Stephen Coe will be presiding at Communion and most of the readings, hymns and prayers will be the same as we'll be having in church this morning. Paul Harrington's playing and Stephen Croft, Bishop Roxford, will preach. We start with our greeting. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Our opening hymn is Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of Creation. God, to, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from, and from whom no secrets are hidden. hidden. Cleanse, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. In his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. 
most Most merciful merciful God, God, Father Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. heart. We We have have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your your mercy, forgive forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that that we may do justly. Love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Collect for the Eighth Sunday after Trinity. Lord God, your Son left the riches of heaven and became poor for our sake. When we prosper, save us from pride. When we are needy, save us from despair. That we may trust in you alone, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we have our Bible readings. The epistle is taken from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 9, verses 1 to 5, and I'm reading from the Revised Standard Version of the Bible. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience bears me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brethren, my kinsmen by race. They are Israelites, and to them belong the sonship, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and of their race, according to the flesh, is the Christ God, who is over all, be blessed for ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we sing our second hymn, I come with joy, a child of God.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus heard about the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so that they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about five thousand men, besides women and children. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May I speak in the name of the living God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I wonder what's your favourite story in the Gospels? Here's a question I like to ask when I visit churches sometimes for informal meetings. Time and again over the years, the story that comes to the top of the list is today's Gospel reading, the feeding of the 5,000. I wonder if it's yours, and if so, why? It's a story that begins when Jesus and the disciples are exhausted and they need to get away. A good story, I think, for the beginning of August. Jesus withdraws by boat to a deserted place, but the crowds follow him, thousands and thousands of people. Jesus has compassion on them and heals the sick. We love Jesus for his humanity. We love that he's exhausted and we love that he puts his tiredness aside for the sake of the crowds. At the end of the day, the disciples kind of try and take over and manage the situation. We might have done the same. Send the crowds away now, that they might go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus turns it round, and he gives the disciples a seemingly impossible challenge. They need not go away. You yourselves give them something to eat. The problem is set. The disciples look around at the vast crowds. 5,000 men with women and children beside. There's nothing for miles around. They see the sun beginning to set over the western hills, and they look at each other. And then their response is a curious mix of honesty and hope. We have nothing here. That's the honesty. We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. Did you hear the but? There's the hope. Every authentic call of God has this curious mixture of honesty and hope. Coming to the end of our own resources, yet entrusting the little that we have to God. For God is able to do great things. It's that mixture of honesty and hope which draws us away from ourselves and into God. We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And this is why we love this story, because we see it lived out in the life of the church year by year by year. We look at the vast needs in the communities around us. We see children going hungry. 
we hear Jesus say, you yourselves give them something to eat. And we say, we have nothing here. But maybe we could start a small food bank or a breakfast club or some meals for those who are shielding. We look at the financial needs of our churches. We say truthfully, we have nothing. But perhaps we could give a little more because the needs are so great. We see the needs of those who have nowhere to live and sleep on the streets. We know we have nothing, but maybe we could use our church halls for winter night shelters to prevent people having to sleep in the open air. We look at the children and young people of our churches who need loving and caring for and teaching the faith. And we have nothing. But if there's no one else, I could offer the little that I do have. And we look at the vast needs in the world, at the disasters emergency appeal currently happening. We know we have nothing to match that need. But we could text and give just £10. That would make a difference. And we look at our local church and we see perhaps no church warden or no treasurer this year. We have nothing, it seems. But maybe I could offer some of my spare time, just for the next couple of years. Jesus takes five loaves and two fish. The little we have sincerely offered. Jesus gives thanks. He breaks the bread and gives it to the disciples. The disciples give it to the crowds. A miracle happens. A miracle happens. Everyone ate and was filled. Every Eucharist, every service of Holy Communion is a sign and reenactment of this story. The priest takes ordinary bread and wine offered by God's people. The priest gives thanks, breaks the bread and gives it to the disciples. And all are fed by the very bread of heaven, the presence of Christ. And then at the end of the service, we offer our very lives to God, all that we have, though it's very little. And God takes what is offered and turns it into a miracle. We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. But what we have, we offer to Jesus, who makes of it something wonderful. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the opportunity we now have to worship you together in person again. We ask that we will always value this, having been unable to do so for so many months. We continue to give thanks also for those who have put together the virtual service. Thank you that it has reached so many people and for the opportunity it has given to those who were and are unable to attend St Peter's in person. We ask for your continued blessing upon this ministry. We ask for your guidance and protection as we live through this time of incredible challenge. Give us wisdom in how to behave 
and courage when we do things that COVID-19 has made us more cautious about. We thank you for the opportunities we now have to see friends and family and let the value and importance of this remain clear to us. We continue to give thanks for all those who continued to work throughout the most difficult time, whether in healthcare or other essential services. Let us not forget the gratitude we felt to them and the value of their work, and we ask that they will have time to rest. We remember to those who are now facing uncertainty and challenge through job loss and ask for your protection on them. We pray for our leaders. We lift before you the leaders of your church and ask that they will show wisdom in guiding us as to how to worship in church and in offering guidance for us in these times. We pray for our political leaders and ask that you will guide them as to how to do what is right. Show us also how best to work for the good of all. We continue to remember the work of charities, in particular the work of the food banks, whose task has become so much harder over recent months, and ask that they will receive the support they need. Remember those countries of the world where people's lives are affected by civil strife. We continue to pray for the peoples of Yemen, Afghanistan, Iraq and Syria and ask that they will know peace. We pray for the people of Hong Kong and for the Reverend Sok Han and her family and her ministry there. We also remember the people of countries where the number of deaths from COVID-19 continues to rise and ask that there will soon be a vaccine. We lift before you those known to us who are sick and ask that you will be with them and those who care for them. We pray too for those who grieve over the loss of loved ones and who have had to say goodbye at a time when restrictions are placed upon funeral services. Lord, give us continued patience at this time and a clear sense that you are with us and that you are in control. Let us always appreciate what a privilege it is to be able to worship you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with, with you, you and, and with, with us all. all. As Jesus gathered those 5,000 plus women and children to share that special meal with him, so we too this morning gather around the Lord's table. Hear the words of comfort our Saviour Christ says to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that all who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The Lord is here. His, his Spirit, Spirit is, is with us. us. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them, them to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to, to give, give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You, you embraced, embraced us, us as, as your, your children, children and, and welcomed us to sit, sit and, and eat with, with you. In Christ you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He, he opened, opened his arms, arms of love upon the cross, cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, Father we, we do this in remembrance of him. His, his body, body is, is the, the bread, bread of life. life. 
At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, Father we, we do, do this, this in remembrance, remembrance of him. him. His, his blood is shed for all. all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As, As we, we eat and drink, drink these, these holy, holy gifts, make us one in Christ, Christ our risen, risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God of power and, and might, heaven and, and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though, Though we are many, many we, we are, are one body, because, because we all share in, in one, one bread. The body of Christ, the blood of Christ. Share together in this prayer. Strengthen, Strengthen us for your, your service, Lord. May, May our ears, which you heard your word, be deaf to the clamour and dispute. May our tongues, which have sung your praise, be free from deceit. May our eyes, which have seen the tokens of your love, shine with the light of hope. And may, and may our bodies, which have, have been spiritually fed with your body, be refreshed with the fullness of your life. Glory to you forever. Amen. Our final hymn, Praise and Thanksgiving, Father, we offer.
we say together, Eternal God, comforter of the afflicted and healer of the broken, you have you fed us at the table of life and hope. Teach us the ways of gentleness and peace, that all the world may acknowledge the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. May we know your special love and help at this time, your compassion and your comfort. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us all and all whom we love, now and always. Amen. Amen. And now Mike will give us the notices. We do hope that you're all well and thank you for joining in our online service and worship this morning. This Wednesday at 10 o'clock we have our Wednesday Holy Communion in church which will be led by uh, Stephen Coe and next Sunday again Stephen will be leading a Holy Communion service in church at 10 o'clock. Bishop Olivia will be preaching at our online service next Sunday. In the meantime, take care and stay safe. Thank you.